and all of a sudden, one day he was taking an ecstasy tablet with me. The next thing you know, he's all uh, happy, lovey-dovey Christian. And uh, I didn't see that as my answer. I really did think that that was the way to solve the problems I saw around me, was in political movement or in self-reliance and self-determination. And that just ended up making me a very um, hard and bitter person. Once I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and knew that I had um, a relationship with God, I was able to then form relationships with those around me. Um, I drank between two to three bottles of red wine a night. I did that for about six years. Um, I used to cry myself to sleep for the last year. It was just getting unbearable. It took me about three and a half weeks afterwards, um, you know, to notice that I had not craved or thought of drinking or smoking in any way whatsoever. I was instantly cured. Um, well, anyway, I went home in a wheelchair and attended the fellowship for the first time. I said, I'll give God a try. And if God works, I'm going to stay in this fellowship. If the Lord doesn't work, I'm not going to waste my time. Um, yeah, like like uh, Pastor Chad said, my name's uh, Phil Haddad. I'm uh, Chad's younger brother, if you uh, need clarification on that. Two years younger than Chad. A bit more hair left. Uh, my story, uh, you know, we're going back about now, about, uh, well, it was that uh, really 19 years ago, uh, Chad and I were very close. We were, you know, very good buddies and growing up, came from a very strong family and uh, we lived the same kind of lifestyle, going out to nightclubs, drinking, carrying on and... Uh... I grew up in uh, a good family, but we never spoke of God. And I guess with the morning session being titled, Who Can Solve My Problems?, I was 14 years old when I heard about the God of the Bible. Um, I thought I knew a bit about God before then. I thought if you didn't kill anybody, you'd get to heaven and everything was going to be sweet. So I thought that uh, as a good person and, and not involved in any murderous trade, um, that I really didn't have to do anything as far as God was concerned, um, that there was no relationship between me and God and that there was never meant to be a relationship. Um, I'd never heard about um, speaking in tongues or the Holy Spirit. I'd never heard about the Lord returning. So um, when you look at me as a 14 year old, you think what sort of problems did I have that I needed somebody to solve? And I guess it's the problem that each and every one of us has in us from the moment of birth. And it's that, that we are separated from God. About a year ago, 18 months ago, you probably wouldn't recognize me because I was an alcoholic. Um, in a very short period of time, uh, I had some dramas in my life. My, um, uh, my brother was murdered, um, my mum died, and my wife left me, and this all happened in about a four-month period. Um, I, sorry, I uh, didn't handle it very well. Um, I basically just went straight into alcohol, because um, it was the only thing that stopped me feeling, and it was got to the point where I just didn't want any feelings at all. If I got happy, I would just get disappointed. So I just didn't want to feel that either. So I literally just drank. Uh, I hit it very well, no one knew, no one ever found out. Um, I drank between two to three bottles of red wine a night. I did that for about six years. I got witnessed to with, uh, by my sister who was in the Lord. She told me about God. I did not need God at the time, I told her, because I had everything. We had a, we had a house, we had a car, we had money. Life was very good. I played sports on the weekends and in my free times I drank and I became addicted to drugs. I smoked marijuana and, and drank alcohol. And in June, um, June after the first, exams, first semester exams was over, uh, we went drinking with my friends and we drank for the whole week. We started drinking on Friday when the last exams was over. We drank all throughout the week. We went into all the nightclubs and continued till on Monday, till Friday the following week, and I went home with a terrible headache. And so what happened was um, Chad actually had met some people who had received this thing called the Holy Spirit, and uh, he went off to a uh, church group, and uh, all of a sudden he was like a cordial drinking, biscuit eating Christian. All of a sudden. One day he was taking an ecstasy tablet with me. The next thing you know, he's all uh, happy, lovey-dovey Christian. And uh, I didn't see that as my answer. And, uh, but within me, there was a war raging. I was already a pretty unhappy person. And um, I had sort of tried to feel that, that separation in my life with um, independence and self-reliance. 
Um, I'm often quoted for wanting to be the first female Prime Minister of Australia. I really did think that that was the way to solve the problems I saw around me, was in political movement or in self-reliance, self-determination, and that just ended up making me a very um, hard and bitter person. And um, I sort of wasn't at the stage in my life where I was even considering God. From what I had seen, I really didn't think there was anything much to find. Um, but when somebody started telling me about miracles, about things that I knew that nobody else on this earth could change, whether that was a medical illness, whether that was provision, whether that was miraculous deliverance, when I started to hear that these things were still happening, I really started to have my eyes open to maybe there's a possibility, there is a way out that I'd never considered before. And I was really amazed by what I heard. Um, I wasn't somebody who'd ever really had much faith or anything like that, and it wasn't a discussion I'd ever really had. But I couldn't deny the things that I was hearing. And as much as I didn't have a burning need within me, I didn't feel like I had any, you know, I wasn't addicted to anything, or I didn't have something I needed to be delivered from. I had this need within me to know what was my purpose in life. And when I received the Holy Spirit in July of 2004, I instantly knew that I had a purpose in life and I had been created by a God that loved me and that he wanted a relationship with me. And I guess for a lot of young people, um, there's a lot of different paths and directions in life and there's a lot of ambiguity and sometimes we're, we're given so much choice that we feel like we're drowning. And uh, I really loved that as soon as I received the Holy Spirit, I knew without a doubt that it wasn't this way or that it wasn't that way, but there was one way to know the truth. Um, and then I was baptised a few days later. And I guess the biggest change within me is that having that peace and having that direction, the Lord had really changed my heart and my attitude. I'd gone from somebody who was yeah, so self-reliant and independent to the point of uh, really difficulty in making relationships and forming connections. Really had a lot of issue trusting people. I really thought that if you trusted anybody, they would let you down. And I guess there's no reason not to believe that when you look around at what the world's doing to itself today. But when, once I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and knew that I had um, a relationship with God, I was able to then form relationships with those around me and it's given me such a fullness. Um, I used to cry myself to sleep for the last year. It was just getting unbearable and I remember asking a question one night uh, as I was crying and I just said, I'm just sick of hearing all these things. I just want to know the truth. Um, within a week I had an answer. Um, suddenly someone just stood out to me, they were just vivid, I can't describe it besides the fact suddenly this person who I'd seen every other day just seemed brighter to me um, and they just started talking to me and in the monk's conversation it just sort of progressed and before I knew it a month later I walked into this place called the Vogue. Um, when I walked in I, I was sure the place was going to burn down, I was sure I was condemned, I condemned myself so much, I pretty much loathed the skin I was in didn't think there was really any hope and I remember as soon as I walked in the first thing I remember was this feeling of peace it was like I didn't have any thoughts in my head and that had never happened before and this was before anyone even spoke or had said anything any, any of the talks were said I remember by um, about halfway through the first talk um, thinking that this uh, pastor who was Pastor John had followed me around for the last 37 years and taken notes of my life because everything he said was directly aimed at me it was basically my life in a nutshell so my parents took me to the hospital and while on the way to the hospital I passed out I was unconscious and the doctors rushed to save me and there were three doctors working on me at the time one was working at my on my chest because I couldn't breathe. Uh, the other one was working on my heart because my pulse was dropping. I had very low uh, sugar level. And the other one was taking blood samples. And the one that took blood samples came back an hour later, and a few hours later, and told me, told my family that uh, your son's got, your son's got a uh, severe pneumonia, and he's got cerebral malaria, and there's no sugar in his blood. And the doctor was saving to, uh, rushing to save me, pushed a big needle through my back to drain fluid from my brain, and he touched the nerve, the big, big nerve, main nerve, and that caused me to be paralyzed from my legs down. And I passed out, my big sister came along, the doctors gave me drugs, and told me that 
I had only about 30 minutes to live. And this is when my big sister came in, had a prayer for me, and the Lord raised me up again. Well, anyway, I spent three days in coma, and then came out, discharged, came to a ward, and got discharged two weeks later. And the doctors told me that I was not going to walk again. I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. And I guess you know, there were two sides. But one side of me was, uh, I knew he was my answer. And I was almost barracking for him at one side of me, saying, oh, you know, I hope he keeps this together because I can see through him this is my way out. And the other side of me, he was actually really exposing me for how unhappy I was. So it was a huge war within me. But um, when I got to a point when I humbled myself, I actually... Uh, very proud. I didn't want to go to the uh, actually the meeting of the Vogue where uh, Chad went to the actual the assembly. We he went. I went off down south to another assembly called um, Woodcroft. I could work this out myself. You know, I still had a bit, still had a bit of my signature on it. And uh, on the way there, I received the Holy Spirit. 718, 18th of October, 1998. Very, very real moment for me in my life. And. Uh, I guess initially the outpouring was pretty amazing, even though you know, when you speak in tongues for the first time, it's pretty unusual to speak in tongues for the first time. But what I did know was when I spoke in tongues that uh, it was something that was very, very real, something I was very comfortable with, even though I had never done it before. And I can just really praise the Lord for the things He's done in my life. There's many stories that I could tell you of what He's done for me since in terms of providing for me and giving me uh, the answers to some of the challenges that life throws at you. Um, being a spirit-filled Christian doesn't mean that we don't have challenges and that we don't still have issues, but we always have a way to overcome and we know that the Lord never lets us down. And I guess that's something that I had to learn as well. I really thought, you know, who's a Christian to tell me about hard things in life? What have they ever experienced? But when you sit here and you talk amongst the brethren about the challenges that we've overcome through the power of the Lord, you know, there are some fantastic testimonies and, you know, we're very qualified to talk about overcoming challenges and I'd really like to praise the Lord for everything that he's done. Um, eventually, I just blurted out in this language. I had no idea what was happening. All I knew was suddenly, I thought, oh, oh that's it, Mark. You've finally lost the plot. You're now going, good, good, good. And I really did. I just didn't know what was going on. All I felt, though, was I had that instant thought of, oh, what, what's happening and then everything went, my mind went completely blank and I just had this bliss that just poured through me. That's the only way I can describe it. If you look up the word bliss, that's all I can say. Just that is the feeling that I had and it never left. I got baptized straight away at my first meeting as well. Um, and the biggest blessing was, it took me about three and a half weeks afterwards, um, you know, to notice that I had not craved or thought of drinking or smoking in any way whatsoever. I was instantly cured. Um, the thoughts that I had and the feelings I had in my heart were gone. This depression, um, this manic depression that I suffered was completely gone and this happened instantly. Um, I've spoken to people since and they just stare straight through you. They can't believe that something like this can happen. You can't just be cured of these things. And I was. And that's the truth. I praise the Lord. I'm just standing here now a free person. And uh, the greatest gift that I've ever received was one that was free. Praise the Lord. Well, anyway, I went home in a wheelchair and attended the fellowship for the first time. I said, I'll give God a try. And if God works, I'm going to stay in this fellowship. If the Lord doesn't work, I'm not going to waste my time. So I went along to the meeting and decided to get baptized. I got baptized. I did not receive the Holy Spirit. But when I came out from the waters of baptism, God did a big miracle. I walked on two dead legs. And two weeks later, I received the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues. And I've been in the Lord ever since, and the Lord has blessed me. Amen.